Okay, Power of Now Part 2. Let's make this quick, shall we? Oh, uh, we've make, got Mario, the original Mario Brothers from the NES on in the background right now. Um, now, we've talked about the power of a moment, the essence of right now, and how that controls our timeline and how it may not control our timeline. Um, you know, he was the word. He was in the beginning. Uh, he was born and came into flesh, and he died and was resurrected, and he's with us now. Emmanuel. God with us. Not was with us. Not will be with us. God with us. It's almost an action verb from the of a name from the very onset. Um, what can we do? We just come. We ju uh, I just went over the evils of the power of uh, power of now, or temptations. Not all of them, but a lot of them. You know, drunkenness, sin, um, controlling your emotions, controlling us, controlling our mouths, uh, sexual immorality. Uh, and I, we're going to get to a few other things here. These are some things that we can do that can help us. And I've got maybe eight things right here. So let's just go through them as quickly as we can. Number one, again, I don't have all the full verses in here. I just sort of have the gist of them. So write them down and read the verse, please. Joshua 1, verse 9. Don't be frightened. Every part of now can be frightening because we don't know what's going to come until it's here, until it's now. And then when it's now, then it's gone. But it was a now moment. Don't be frightened. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord is with you. Philippians. What does that say? I think it's 4 verse 13. like 4113, but I think it's four, chapter 4, verse 13. Um, that we can do anything through, with, through Him who strengthens me. We can do anything with God who strengthens us. And then I was in the bathroom. I was looking in the mirror. And I got to, it just, it just occurred to me how an alternate variation of the, of the de defining faith. Now, at my church, we, we define faith, in, or most people do, believing in something that not seen. Do we see God? No. We know He's there. Do we see Jesus? No, but He was born, lived, died, and resurrected. Do we see him every day? No, but he's here. That's part of the part of faith. But then I got to thinking something else. Before I even wrote, started writing this down, that faith is putting our strength in something not seen, not believing it, not just believing it, but putting our strength into it. I mean, I'm not very strong. I used to be, when I was in college, I used to work out a lot. But I don't get to work out a whole lot. Um, and so, not every guy or woman, girl, or boy has a lot of muscle or muscle, you know? Where are we going to get our strength to go on? Our strength to, to lose weight. Our strength to get through a driving exam, to our strength to fight same-sex attraction, our strength to get through another day, our strength to not try to commit suicide. Where do we get the strength? We get it from God. We get it from Jesus. 
So we need to put our faith in Him by putting our strength in Him. Through prayer, God works. Do you see the circle here? There is something there. Philippians 4, 13, I believe. Love, let's keep going. We're running out of time. Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. And it's all about love. That's where, you know, love is this and this. I used to have it memorized. I don't have it memorized anymore. Uh, it's all about love and honor. And it is so many people's favorite verse. Uh, you know, write it down, memorize it. It's wonderful. Uh, Romans 12, verse 10 also goes hand in hand with, with, with love as well. Four, an, an, another fourth part to help us give some self-control. We don't need to be frightened or discouraged. We need to put all our faith in God. We need to be able to love and honor the people around us. We need to put trust in God and trust in other people trust. Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. And you know control. We just need control. Uh, that's number 5. James 1 verses 19 through 20. We need to listen. And we need to be slow to anger. And the anger of man does not produce righteousness of God. Uh, our anger is not godly anger. Our anger is worldly anger. And this is what James 1, 19 through 20 is explaining to us. Um, number six, we need to obey. In, in the previous video I just mentioned in part two, Power of Now part two, I said, you know, we are just a chain of people with titles. Now, I'm not going to get it at the titles because even Jesus said we don't need titles because we are all equal. Um, you know, we need to obey. And that's part of the Ten Commandments. We need to obey our parents. We need to respect our parents, but we need to obey authority. You know, if you're caught by the police and you obey what they do they say, they're not going to whip their gun out on you. If they say, hands up, you put your hands up. You don't reach for anything. You don't go into a car. You don't open a window. You don't bend down. You do what they say. You don't run. You don't step on the gas. <laughs> uh, you want to get in some major trouble, try doing the opposite of what a cop is telling you. That's what a lot of some of the stuff going on is all about. And it's being hush hushed. Yeah, there's a few bad, a few bad cops out there, but that's not what this is all about. Oh, we have to obey authority from our teachers to our parents to a, a most adults. I think it's raining outside. Um, you know, teachers, managers, I almost said specialists, managers, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've got to obey. Uh, but also in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, we need to obey God and the commandments. That is key. If we're not doing that, you're not going to obey. Any adult, you're not going to obey the law, you're not going to obey, whatever, fill in the blank. If you're not following God, if you're not following the basis of the Ten Commandments, you're not going to obey anybody. You think you're above the law. You think you can make the law. You think you can break the law. And then you expect equality so everybody can break the law. That would be complete chaos. Um, number seven, peace should rule. We should allow peace in our hearts. Did 
I say that right? Peace in our heart. <laughs> um, if God is giving us the hand of grace so we can be saved through His Son, we should be able to accept peace in our heart as well. And a lot of people don't want to have put that kind of trust in someone they can't see to just have peace. To be at peace. To have a sense of joy. To have a sense of real contentment and love. To be able to spread the love with anybody around them and be able to let their shoulders down around anybody and get to know others without fear and there's a lot of fear out there right now number eight we gotta we gotta finish this don't suffer first peter 4 verse 15 is murder okay is stealing okay being a meddler in things is that okay is evil Doing bad deeds, that must be okay. No, none of this is okay. Uh, and what this verse is telling us is that people that do that suffer. But that goes both ways. It almost sounds like, well, the victim is the one suffering. It's the victim. It's the victim. Oh, you're a victim. I'm a victim. Everyone's a victim. Two, four, six, we're all a victim. Be a victim. No, 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 no. It's the person that is the murderer. When he kills somebody, he's himself is suffering from something. Yeah, the victim of theft or meddling or some other evil action may be the sufferer or the, or the direct cause of suffering, but it's the person that does the action to the victim is suffering from something. I'm almost forced to watch all these NCIS and Criminal Minds and, and LA and all these other things, and most of the time, not all the time, the villain is normally suffering from some sort of previous trauma. And reliving that trauma now and making that power of their character now that I say person no because they're written therefore you know it their now moment is in a loop they are not letting that trauma go whatever that trauma is to make them do bad deeds to do something so villainous so malicious it makes a good story and it's wonderful entertainment, but it's not good. It, they are suffering from something. Um, but overall, read Second Timothy verse um, one. Second Timothy, oh gosh, I'm running out of time. Two Timothy chapter one verse seven. Uh, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. we got to have self-control. We've got to start somewhere. Uh, and this is actually going to spurn another video, not tonight, of a sense of spiritual maturity. And not just spiritual maturity, adult maturity. Uh, that I believe I see a lot of people lacking and a lot of adults lacking that are all over YouTube. But we're going to get to that another time. So go back, write down those verses, go look them up and read them in their entirety and get their context. Thank you so much for another wonderful night. I hope you got something out of this and I hope you're able to prevent control your power of now.